Hey students, today we're going to talk about thermal energy and what factors affect how much thermal energy something has. Um, so to start out, we really got to talk about what thermal energy is. Thermal energy is the total energy of all the particles in a substance. That includes both kinetic and potential energy of the particles in a substance. So um, we've learned about kinetic energy before. We know that kinetic energy equals one half mass times velocity squared. So the kinetic energy can be affected by both the mass and the velocity of something's particles. So if the molecules of a substance speed up, it gains kinetic energy and therefore gains thermal energy. And if the molecules are larger and going at the same speed, then they're going to have more total kinetic energy and therefore more total thermal energy. Um, potential energy then also plays a part in this, and this is mostly talking about the chemical potential energy of a substance's molecules. And that can be affected by things like the bonds they have or the separation between the molecules. Um, but uh, overall, it includes just the total kinetic and potential energy of all the particles or molecules of a substance. So, um, what factors affect how much thermal energy a substance has? There's actually three main factors. The first one is mass, or how much substance you have. The second one is temperature, how hot or cold is the substance. And the third one is something called specific heat, or you'll also uh, see that written as the uh, heat capacity of that substance. Okay, let's look at each one of those individually. So first let's talk about temperature. We're all very familiar with temperature. We say something that hot has a high temperature. We say something that's cold has a cold um, or low temperature. And we measure temperature in a few different ways. Uh, most of us are most familiar with Fahrenheit. Um, so when we say that it's 70 degrees outside or it's below zero, we're talking about the Fahrenheit temperature scale. Um, and uh, the one we use more often in science is called Celsius. And degrees Celsius are a little bit larger than degrees Fahrenheit, so uh, a 20 degree change in Celsius would be a bigger change in temperature than a 20 degree change in Fahrenheit, for example. And there's also another temperature scale we call Kelvin, but we won't get into those specifics any more than that. Um, basically, what does temperature measure about a substance? What does it mean to touch something that's hot versus something that's cold? Um, and temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles of a substance. So remember, for any given substance, it has these um, atoms that are bouncing around. Um, and at any given time, they're not all traveling at the same speed. A few of the atoms might be moving really fast, some might be moving slow, they bounce into each other, um, you know, speeding one up and one slows down when it bumps into each other, so there's a lot of collisions going on. Um, but on average, if you take the average kinetic energy of those, you get the temperature. So let's take, for example, this horseshoe. We have a horseshoe that is being forged in this picture over here. Its vi atoms are vibrating very quickly, it's at a very high temperature. And we look at this horseshoe over here, its atoms are vib vibrating sorry, very slowly. It's at a cool temperature. So the average kinetic energy of these molecules would be a lot higher than this, and this temperature would be higher. Um, by the way, this can also be affected by its mass. For example, if you had a really large um, molecules in the substance, they would not need to be going nearly as fast to have the same kinetic energy as a very small molecule. So um, to put that another way, um, a large molecule going slow could have the same kinetic energy as a small molecule going fast. Okay, but again, temperature is related to the average kinetic energy of a substance. If you touch something and its atoms are moving very quickly, it's going to feel hot to you and it could burn your hand. If you touch something and its atoms are moving very slowly, then energy is going to travel from your hand to those atoms and it's going to feel cold. All right, the second thing um, is mass. And this one's kind of easy to picture too. What would have more thermal energy? Um, a just boiled cup of uh, hot water here or a whole hot tub that's pretty warm? Um, this cup here 
might actually have a higher temperature. Let's say it's just beneath boiling at 90 degrees Celsius. And this hot tub, it might be warm, but not near that warm. Let's say maybe, I don't know, 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, we certainly would never get in a hot tub that was almost boiling at 90 degrees Celsius. But you can also imagine that there are, is a lot more total thermal energy in this hot tub than there is in this cup. If you were to pour that cup into the hot tub, the hot tub would barely change temperature at all. Um, one way to think about that is a mass is an estimate of the number of molecules in a substance, um, the amount of stuff it has. So if each molecule is at the same temperature, it's going to have an average kinetic energy. Um, and let's say this average kinetic energy of this molecule is 1. Um, so let's say the hot tub then, we're going to make this real simple, we'll say it has 10 molecules in it. If the average kinetic energy is 1 and there's 10 of them, then 10 times 1 would be a total of 10 units of thermal energy. But then let's say this coffee cup, it only had one molecule, then its average kinetic energy, its temperature was still 1, but it only has one molecule, so it only have one unit of thermal energy. So the number of molecules in the substance matters. Now in real life, we're looking at trillions of molecules in this cup and many, many trillions more in this hot tub. But the more molecules it have, the more total thermal energy you'd have. Okay, and the last thing um, that affects total thermal energy is something called specific heat or heat capacity. We asked this question in lab. If you place a large metal block that is close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in a similar amount of cool water that's at room temperature, what will the final temperature of the mixture be? Um, remember, if we did our lab, we mixed um, both a hot brass block that weighed about 230 grams and um, about 230 grams of hot water with cool water. When we mixed the brass block, we put a brass block that was at 94 degrees Celsius in cool water and that little tiny blip on the graph, that little blue blip you see there, that is all that happened. It, the cool water warmed up by just a few degrees. But when we mixed an equal amount of hot water with the cool water, this is what happened. That cool water shot up by as much as uh, maybe 25, 30 degrees Celsius. So that had a very big difference. So that proved that water, the same amount of water, has much more energy than a similar amount of brass, even if they're at the same temperature. And this is something called specific heat. We looked at that another way by heating water and vegetable oil on the same hot plate. So we were adding an even amount of heat to both substances over time. We got time on the x-axis here, and we got the change in temperature on the y-axis. So this is change in temperature and this is time. And this blue line was the water, and the red line was the oil. So as we heated these at an even rate, the oil heated up much more quickly than the water did. This means oil has a lower specific heat. A lower specific heat or a smaller heat capacity. It takes less energy to heat the same amount of oil up than it does water. That's why water is heating up really slowly. It takes a lot of energy to heat water up. Um, okay, let's look at a table that shows the specific heat of a whole bunch of, su of substances. Technically, the specific heat of a substance is the amount of energy it takes to raise uh, one gram, or we'll, this charts in kilograms, we'll talk about uh, kilograms, to raise one kilogram of a substance by one degree uh, Celsius or Kelvin. So if you were to heat one kilogram of the substance up by one degree, how much uh, energy would that take? And if you look at water, it would take 4,186 joules to raise one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. Um, alcohol, on the other hand, is about half that. It would only take 2,549 joules of energy to heat one kilogram of alcohol by one degree Celsius. Um, and as you go down here, we'll see somewhere in the middle, here's soil. It would take about one-fourth um, 
of the amount of energy to heat a kilogram of soil up, about 1,046 joules, whereas water is at 4,186 joules. So the specific heat of soil is um, somewhere around four times less than that of water. And here we go all the way down. You'll see all the metals are down here at the bottom. Here's steel at 452, copper, silver, mercury, gold, lead as one of the lowest specific heats. It only takes 128 joules of energy to heat a kilogram of lead by one degree Celsius. Um, if we compare those, 4,186 for water divided by 128 for lead, and we find out that water has a specific heat 32.7 times bigger than leads. It takes 32.7 times more energy to heat up water than it does to heat up lead. That's what specific heat means. So let's apply specific heat to a couple real world situations like climate. If you look at these climate graphs, Seattle and uh, Washington and Missoula, Montana are at very similar latitudes. You would expect them to maybe have very similar uh, climates but they're actually not. So this is the average warm and the average cold, the average warmest temperature during the day and the average coldest temperature during the day for each of these months, January through December, for a whole year. And you'll see that on average, the Seattle temperature ranges somewhere between, I don't know, what is that, maybe 45 or 6 degrees in the coldest months of the year to maybe 75, 76 degrees during the warmest months of the year. Missoula, on the other hand, this same temperature is only about maybe 30 degrees, 30, 31, 32 degrees, all the way to as high as maybe 80 degrees or more, 81 degrees, um, during the hottest months. So Missoula is both colder during the winter, 30s colder than 46, and warmer during the summer, 80s warmer than 76, than Seattle is. Why would that be? And the answer comes down to um, the ocean. Um, Seattle is much closer to the ocean. The ocean is a huge body of water, and water has a very high specific heat. So it, uh, the ocean has both a lot of mass, which gives it a lot of thermal energy, and it has a high specific heat, which gives it a lot of thermal energy. Which means that in the winter, when the land, which has a lower specific heat, cools off relatively quickly, the ocean stays warmer than the land, and heat travels from the ocean to the land and warms it, making it warmer in the winter. During the summer, the land heats up faster than the water because it has a lower specific heat. And so heat travels from the land to the ocean and actually cools it. So the water cools Seattle in the su summer and warms Seattle in the winter, giving it a much more moderate climate. Um, really quickly, why does something have a higher specific heat? Without getting into a lot of detail, it's because of the chemical bonds, the chemical nature of the substance. Water, for example, because it's a very polar molecule, which means it has a very high separation of charge. The uh, oxygens in water are negatively charged and the hydrogens are positively charged. And uh, opposite charges attract, so the oxygens of one molecule are attracted to the hydrogens of the other. And they form all these weak hydrogen bonds between the molecules. And to heat water up, you've got to break these bonds. And to cool it down, these bonds have to reform, and that takes a lot of energy. In metal, these um, electrons are really free to move, These uh, and it just makes it, it's really easy for heat to be transferred back and forth. There's not very strong bonds in between these individual atoms. Um, so water molecules have very strong bonds that holds atoms together and makes it difficult to heat up, and metal have very weak bonds, and so it doesn't take very much energy at all to uh, break them up and heat them up. Okay, so to summarize all that, we can actually put it into a math formula, and we can calculate the total change in thermal energy of a substance is equal to its mass times its change in temperature times its specific heat, where its specific heat is the amount of energy required to heat one gram by one degree Celsius. All right, so that is uh, the difference between heat uh, thermal energy and uh, how mass, sorry, well that tells you how both mass, specific heat, and temperature affects something's thermal energy. Uh, check back in for our next lecture later.